In November next year, the Philippines will host the 2015 APEC Summit, an event that will have the whole world looking to see whether the Philippines can successfully repeat the staging of the last summit held here in 1996. Although there are serious questions about the state of the Philippine public infrastructure system, the local hotel industry says they are more than ready for the influx of visitors next year. In this episode, we take a look at how hotels in the country's two central business districts are wrapping up preparations of their own with brand new concepts and newly refurbished properties. So join us. I'm David Zeldran and this is Executive Class. <laughs> When the 21 heads of state of the APEC member countries converge in Manila for the summit next year, this is what will greet them. A modern city skyline, emblematic of one of the fastest growing economies in the region. Global economic events hosted by the Philippine government have always been venues to showcase the country's progress. In 1996, the APEC summit helped counter images of widespread poverty and political turmoil. In the 1970s, the Marcos regime did the same. It used the IMF World Bank Conference in Manila to promote the country and Manila as a modern gateway to its progressive economy. The government-funded building boom that preceded it gave Manila its most iconic structures and its first wave of luxury hotels. While some of the hotels of that era have gone the way of the dictator, many of the original ones have survived, even prospered. The Peninsula Manila is the second longest operating peninsula property in the world after Hong Kong. The luxury hotel in Makati has survived more than just one revolution, but various episodes of military adventurism since. While banking on the peninsula's stellar brand has helped, it's a hotel's spirit of innovation and attention to luxury that's kept it competitive over the years. Never standing still is the secret to success, from refurbishing guest rooms to new F&B and entertainment concepts to constantly perfecting well-loved peninsula traditions. It's so easy to forget that the hotel first opened her doors 37 years ago. small hotels rise in the neighborhood, it's no longer enough to rely on a powerful global brand. Increased competition means providing better value than your rivals can. That's where the new Holiday Inn and Suites is successful, offering competitive prizes without sacrificing a central occasion or generous room size, or access to a scenic roof deck complete with pool and bar. As newly built hotels threaten the market share of older ones nearby, established properties like the Duce Tani have updated their rooms and facilities to keep customers loyal. The hospitality brand from Thailand has invested in a brand new 900 square meter club lounge that sits atop the hotel. The Thais are experts in building sanctuaries and spas, and that's exactly what they've achieved here, an oasis in the city, with lush tropical greenery at the rooftop. At the new club lounge, you'll hardly notice traffic in Edsa or the busy malls below. The club lounge also offers all-day dining and access to meeting rooms. If exclusive to guests of the club floor, where all the rooms and suites have likewise been refurbished and updated. The management of the Ducid knows that most business travelers still expect an extensive list of amenities from their partner hotel. But for a new breed of clients, less is more. Basic, quality accommodations without the frills and the padded price tag that comes with it. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Saldran. Thanks for watching.